of what she wants done and how she's going to do it, and Emmett ain't going to be able to stop her. How many people you know cook with na uh, wedge nails the way Lala's in there cooking with them wedge nails? Mm -hmm. I don't know no good chef that got wedge nails. Did she wear a uh, glove? She ain't have no I ain't see no glove, no. Nah. Mm -hmm. I mean, who knows what she's been scratching and got yeah. underneath them fingernails. You can't, yeah. You can't run no production nah. like that. Mm -hmm. She in there cooking and preparing the food. <laughs> no, good and damn well, the head been itching at some point in time. You oh, done took that wedge and went all up in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they need to prepare just boxed dinners. Hey. We have it already prepared. This is what you get. You can't order no pounds of this and, mm -hmm. and buckets of this. We put it all in a chicken dinner, and that's it. <laughs> no mixing and mastering. Yep. <laughs> Number two storyline and plot and character, Trig and Imani. So Jake, Kevin, they go to Trig. Trig agrees to roll up on Nook's house. We assume Nook was the guy that came to the door. He's just the damn doorman. Mm -hmm. Oh, punk ass acting like he owns something. They eventually find Nook. Now, keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, Nook is the last person Keisha texted when she was at that bus stop. Right. And they tie him up, and they go through the house. This is a trap house, meaning they trapping drugs, they trapping alcohol, and they trapping it looks like prostitution. Now, the first thing I asked you was, what's his girlfriend about that life? <laughs> and I told you she was about that she life. She showed you at that door. Yeah, Trig girlfriend is about had that her life. Gun, took, took his, his gun. gun and yeah, she, she had two, and he had one walking up in the house. But <laughs> but this is what I think they're trying to reveal about that dynamic. Once they got in there, Imani had some memory recall things going on, where it looked like they harped to her insecurities that she might have been in some kind of trap, drug trafficking. I mean, drug sex raid or she might have been in a trap house being forced and it triggered some things in her that she went in there and bopped dude across the head that was hitting the front of the back my god i hope he won't bop the nut and then got knocked out poor mm -hmm. fella how do you feel about the way they're building that dynamic between trig and imani and what we just saw come to her memory during that scene um so one it tells you that they have a you, you, she's not with him for, I don't want to say with him for no reason. It's kind of like birds of a feather flock together. Oh, so he's just, she's just as hard, if not harder, it seems like, than, than he is. Um, it also brings up that she does have a past. Mm -hmm. um, she mentioned that she wants to go back and help those people. I don't know how she plans on going back and doing it. She's a saber hole. Yeah, well... Yeah, basically saving people who went through the same struggle that she went through. And, and you know how tough that can be. And I wonder, like, is she going to run back and try to do something stupid in terms of trying to get yeah. people out that house without yeah. her, her boyfriend or whatever knowing? Yeah. Um, it also raises the issue. Now, do you think they just going to be able to roll up in there, do all that stuff, and just and get away with straight it. free? No. So who's gonna, mm -hmm. Who's looking after them now? Who's mm -hmm. coming after them because of what they did? Oh, you can cool believe they're probably going to grab her. Mm -hmm. I, I can easily see them grabbing her and putting her to work. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's why or this... Or grabbing, coming back after uh, Trig. After Trig. So that's why this was my number two on the list because that was just really setting up for an explosion. Mm -hmm. That was a big explosion when they went in there and done what they did. But at the same time, it shows you how much he wants to get back in the good graces of his brother. Because mm -hmm. that, was, that was some big to-do. Yeah, but there's going to be some type of payback or oh, yeah. retaliation or something later in the there's show. There's going to be retaliation. They know who to come looking for because the little boy, they know it's Keisha's the little brother. Mm -hmm. They're going to come looking for him and whoever else. It's gonna, this is definitely going to probably be the way Duda is going to get brought into the story somehow, some way. Mm -hmm. So, number one storyline for the character is my man Ronnie. Y'all like to call him Rusty Ronnie. Mark Dark gave him that name. I'm starting to feel for this character because we're seeing him spiral out of control the same way we're seeing some of the characters on Hightown spiral out of control. And so they pick up with his story with him collecting his cans. Next thing you know, he goes to where he drops the cans off and gets paid. And then that poor woman that worked at the can collection trying to offer Ronnie some pity ah. pussy. And he keep turning it down. Some pity draws. Well, you can call it whatever you want, but there's a reason why men don't take pity draws. draws. Because it ain't no telling how many Tom, Dick, and Harry's done been in them pity draws. It's like turning the doorknob. Every time you open the door, the knob turns and the hand touches it. So he says no. Then 
throughout the, throughout the his storyline, we see him running in pleasure. I mean, dude had a smile on his face and people was about to beat him up. Mm -hmm. That is a clear sign of like someone who's definitely in some kind of pain, having some mental distress. Because um, we've seen that with other people in similar situations. He gets beat up outside the church, which happened to be Papa's daddy's church. Mm -hmm. Come in there, you know, he cleans him up, says, you know, come to Jesus, whatever, whatever. He goes see his mama, and this is when I think he hit rock bottom. The mama shun him because she's got Alzheimer's or whatever. His grandmother, excuse me. Yeah. Shuns him because he's got Alzheimer's, says he's not a hero, and he took that hard. I was wondering what happened to the grandmother. They never, yeah. never introduced that. Right. Why he wasn't going back to the grandmother's house, and, and, and that's why it is. Mm -hmm. it, she even like called him a bum. She right. said, my, my grandson is a is a, 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 a army, whatever he right. was, and, but you're a bum. And so that hit him. Yeah, that made him feel worse. But at the same time, I think when he hit rock bottom because she's talking about you're no hero, all this stuff, something clicked with him. I think that's the moment he decided he's going to start trying to figure out how to find Keisha. So he can be a hero. So he can be a hero. He gets some flowers. He goes and gives them to the chick at the can stand so he can take the pity draws. And then in the very end of the story, we see him looking at some APB white dude. I mean, staring hard. At the vigil. At yeah. the vigil. He goes to the vigil, sees this white guy, follows him out of the crowd as if he's seen him somewhere, and that's where it leads us to the questions and why I put this as number one. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's not the guy that he took the cell phone from in the last episode. This is some new white guy, and we can only believe that Ronnie must have seen this guy somewhere lurking around that bus stop when Keisha got abducted or something to that effect. Yeah. Give us your side of what you think. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think Ronnie is going to play a key role in Keisha being found, um, dead or alive. I'm not sure, but he's going to play a role in that. Right. I still don't think the community is going to warm up to him. I, I think they're always going to be suspicious that he has something to do with it. Um, unless there's something that redeems him um, from them th viewing him that way. It could be saving, finding Keisha. So, yeah, I think Ronnie still has a rough road because people don't trust him. Well, we are getting to see the, the, the nuts and bolts of his character. Mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing where he's falling apart, and I'm starting to feel a little sorry for him. Yeah, I mean, he's, I think he's, he made a, a huge mistake. I don't right. think he's a bad guy. Right. Um, but, yeah, people just haven't accepted him back into... The community. Into the, into the right. community. Yeah, and, but he's definitely, he definitely seems to be like a, a, a quote-unquote stand-up guy. He's just struggling mm -hmm. with a lot of stuff. Right. So, um, and then with the guy being at the vigil, a lot of people return to either the scene of the, scene of the crime mm -hmm. or they hang out at vigils to try to figure out if, you know... The police know. If somebody knows what's going some, on. Right. Yeah. So. And that guy looked completely looked out of place when he saw Ronnie right. looking at him. He, he bust up. So Hell, he was the only white dude at the thing. So, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, they ain't stick him in there for nothing. Please leave us all your comments on anything that you felt we should have put in our top five character slash storyline plots. Follow me and Larry tomorrow night. We will be going live at 9 p.m. to talk just a little bit more shy. And then after that, it's on to deliver this baby, and I will try to get some baby content up within the week. Anything else you want to say about the shy? No. You good? It's, it's, it's a good show. Yeah, it's a I'm good show. It. Lena's doing good this week. I know a lot of people aren't happy about the LGBT thing, but this is a stance she wants to put on blast so that more people can understand their plight as well. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Hit me and Larry tomorrow night at 9 p.m. as we do our live show for the week, and we'll be talking about the shy. And until that next sex is hell video, we'll see you.